The blessing of rebuke. The truth is that the blessings are concealed within the rebuke itself. Malvam explains that the inner motivation of true rebuke is great love. This is true this is true of a loving father, and it is true of the Almighty Himself, who rebukes us with love, as we find in Proverbs, for he who God loves, he rebukes, and like a father he will appease his son. Loving parents know that they must sometimes rebuke their child for his or her own benefit to educate them so that they refine their ways. One literal rendering of another verse in Proverbs reads, Better is revealed rebuke when it comes from hidden love. Parents who never rebuke their children cause them harm, as expressed in the verse, One who spares the rod hates his son. The one who loves him will rebuke him promptly. This we see from King David's negligence. In rebuking his son Adonia, his father never upset him by saying, Why did you do that? A certain measure of chastisement defines one's limits. The sages similarly describe how God chastised the world to make it stand. From a more profound perspective, Hasidut outlines two levels of blessing. Normal blessings are explicit and are communicated openly. There are special blessings that must remain concealed, sometimes within harsh words of criticism. The source of a hidden blessing is higher than that of revealed blessings. The source of a hidden blessing is higher than that of revealed blessings. What appears to us as suffering is a product of the abundance that emanates from the concealed world. Such profusion cannot be revealed in our world in the form of a direct blessing. As such, a hardship is an even deeper expression of God's closeness to us Happy is the man whom God afflicts. When the Almighty afflicts an individual with difficulties, he should accept it with equanimity. This idea is certainly not an easy pill to swallow for the suffering individual, but from an objective point of view, the rebuke itself is a blessing. Like a father who says, I love this disobedient child so much that I have to scold him for his actions. Rebuke has the power to sweeten the harsh judgments at their source, ultimately bringing down infinite blessing. The Talmud relates that Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai once sent his son Elazar to ask for a blessing from two sages. Elazar was shocked to hear their words which sounded to him like the opposite of blessings. Rishim Bar Yochai explained to him that their intention was to bless him profusely. For example, when they blessed him, you shall sow but not reap. Their intention was, you will have children and not see them die. Similarly, there are many stories that relate how a chassid was saved from some evil because of such a rebuke from his rebbe. Chassidim know that if the Rebbe chastises you, it is a joyful occasion. One such extreme case is related about the righteous Rebbe of Baruch of Mezhibus, the oldest grandson of the Baal Shem Tov, who was renowned for his severity. It was Rebbe Baruch of Mezhibus' holy custom to make his student's life a misery. He scolded angrily anyone who came to, to learn Torah from him. He interrupted. He interpreted the phrase, and the souls he made in Haran referred to the souls who one rectifies with one's rage, Haron, Af. Once, as he sat down to a meal, a rich man entered his home, and Rabbi Baruch began to rant and rave at him, and even commanded his helpers to push him out of the house. Rabbi Baruch's son-in-law, Rabbi Avram Dov of Chemelinik, who was present at the time, asked Rabbi Baruch how he justified such behavior in the light of the injunction. Anyone who embarrasses his friend in public, Rabbi Baruch retorted, Why don't you complete the sentence? 
has no portion in the world to come, I saw that there were harsh judgments heading toward that man, and by humiliating him I annulled all the judgments that were on him. How could I not forfeit my portion in the world to come in order to save another Jew? Such a severe method can only be adopted by a choice few. We simple folk cannot replicate it. It teaches us that chastisement and stern review can stem from a profound form of love. When Rabbi Baruch passed away, they found the Zohar open at the page that states, There is anger, and there is anger. There is anger that is blessed above and below, and it is called blessed, teaching us that Rabbi Baruch, whose name means blessed, was true to his name. He was blessed, and he conveyed blessing. His anger and rebuke were merely garments for the great blessing he bestowed upon the world. We can illustrate this with a numerical illusion. The numerical value of blessing is to bracha is 227, and their numerical value of rebuke, tochacha, is 439. The sum is 666, which is three times 222, the numerical value of the three-lettered word of uh, root of blessing, parech. This verb appears three times in the final verse of Jacob's blessing to his sons, that he blessed them, each man according to his own blessing that he blessed them. The numerical values of the three verbs that appear in the verse spoke, diber, he blessed, by barech, and bless Barech are 206, 238, and 222. Respectively, the sum of these numerical values is also 666, or three times bless, teaching us that it was all a blessing.